um, thrilled to have you all at the conference today. This is the largest FinTech event to take place in the Carolinas. How about a huge round of applause for that, right? What we want to look at is that we're at the final countdown of digital banking infrastructure and transformation. You're in the final countdown. What are you going to do in the next several months to transform who, what you're doing and how you're doing it, even if it's the best thing you know how to do, and to do it in a new way? And I'm sure a lot of people in the room have heard about PSD2 in Europe without being totally sure exactly why it is or what it's important. So, Henry, in no more than about three minutes, mm -hmm. can you tell us everything everyone in the room needs to know about <laughs> yeah. PSD2 and, oh, why, you uh, and uh, what the then, and also what the context is um, for people that are doing business over here, right. just to make it more challenging. You know, when you look at, at data, you've got to look at, you know, do I have do I have the rights to use the data, or have the data? Do I have the rights to use the data? Do I have the rights to share the data? And I think we're, we're pretty locked down on the fraud and risk side of how data gets shared. It's, uh, the, the data is, is leaking out substantially on the payment side, primarily mm -hmm. through bank marketing groups and directly from the merchants. My view of uh, you know, financial inclusion success would be if everybody has access to basic saving, uh, credit, and, and I think insurance. Right, so, so in some ways, you know, that to, to Kevin's point, right, I think that probably provides a green button for most people, right? There is a level of foundation in place just in case anything bad happens, right? And that in insurance could be a, for a business, for a person, but I think that's, those are the three things in my mind which probably makes a successful inclusion. We have our rule set, and that is Carolina FinTech. And the only thing that remains is we need an entity, a body, to then house these rules. It has to be input somewhere. And that is where the Carolina FinTech Hub comes into play. Who is the, the ideal partner? or Who is the, the party we should be aligning with um, in, the, in the context of payment? It, is it the platform? Is it figuring out the Google APIs to use to build out that experience? Is it, let me find the banks to work with and leverage it that way? Uh, is it the merchants? Let me, let me sort of build around that experience. You each target different parts of the market, so there's some variety there, but in general, what's your personal view around who's the player sort of in the lead or the one that, that best benefits your sort of chance of success? The advice I give to, to folks when, when thinking about working with a big company is just understand how big companies work. They're slow, you're not gonna, it's not gonna happen overnight, you're gonna have to have 10 meetings sometimes to actually get to a decision. Like, be ready for that. I've seen um, really entrepreneurs wilt under the bigness of uh, working with a company like MasterCard, uh, Capital One, Wachovia. I used to work at, uh, for Wachovia here in town. Um, so just be ready for the fact that you have really committees and risk committees and internal stakeholders that you have to convince um, that your solution is going to help them um, address a consumer need. One of the things that I've seen work really well in the past couple of years is actually for an entrepreneur to come in with just a simple ask to do a proof of concept. Like I'm not looking to be your um, you know, answer to all your questions in this space. I just like to do a proof of concept with you. Find a customer, particularly in the B2B space, uh, space where we can actually test this out and see if it works. 